When it comes to audio software, Reaper tends to have more of the reputation of what can you not do as opposed to what you can do. And the wonderfully kind developers over there didn't just build one of the best audio softwares that's ever existed, they decided to build a mostly fully functional video editor right inside that audio software. And I decided to make my quest to really try to understand this software so I can pass that knowledge on to you so you can know when to use this and when not to and what it's good for and what it's not. Let's get into it. So to start the pros and cons off, this is probably going to be one of the cheapest video editors that you're going to get outside of something that's just straight up free. And then secondly, I found compared to other production level video editors like Adobe Premiere, Reaper will take a huge amount of file formats that a lot of these other professional softwares tend to want you to convert before you get there. I've often had inconsistent results with using videos that come directly from my iPhone. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. And inside Reaper, I can dump all kinds of video formats at it, and I haven't found a mainstream file format that it didn't take. The third pro of Reaper as a video editor is I find that if you come from an audio editing background, you really are comfortable with the editing workflow of that and how a grid is laid out that way. So video editing timeline is generally focused on frames and time. A audio timeline is really based around beats and beats per minute. So if you're editing something that really focuses around music, you want an easy way to edit right to the grid that the song's on. Just set the BPM of your Reaper video project to the same BPM as that song. The existing grid in Reaper will allow you to edit super easily, just like you would audio, straight to the beats of that song. The fourth thing, I find if I just need to make a video really quickly and edit something together without having to put a lot of thought into it, Reaper is a good way to go. The existing hotkeys and editing mode inside Reaper really make this pretty easy to crank out a video really quick if all you need to do is a simple edit. Now that being said, there are some definite cons when you should not use Reaper. So the first thing I find is that although basic editing is far easier, anything beyond that is pretty limited within Reaper. If you want any kind of effects or transitions or any of those things that have come pretty stock in most other video editors for a very long time, you're not really gonna find them in Reaper, or if they are there, they're kinda a little bit wonky to use. In fact, even just taking a clip and rotating it is kind of buried deep inside a menu, and you really have to know where to look. So basically, any kind of effects or anything that you're doing is done inside a video processor plugin that comes with Reaper. There's not a whole lot in there that's super usable and definitely doesn't look modern, and it takes a lot of tweaking to get anything that looks pretty good. And next, even with the basic effects that are there, I find that if you stack just a few of them, it really starts to noticeably slow down Reaper. And in fact, in your preview menu, it often turn green as it's trying to buffer through all those things. It doesn't have nearly the configurability and efficiency that, for instance, Premiere has for its preview windows and how it handles lots of effects at once. So let's talk about what you should and probably shouldn't use this for. So definitely don't view this as a full replacement for any video software that you have, but there's a few specific tasks that I would really recommend probably doing in Reaper over your existing video editor. So with my project Baby Wolf, I tend to do about a one minute super stylized playthrough video video for each of my singles that I release. And for something like that, I find Reaper is a much better tool than any other video editor I've used. Again, because it's built around audio first, it makes syncing video to audio incredibly easy and editing to that super easy. That all being said, I'm actually editing this exact video right now in Reaper. I'd really like to show you some tips and shortcuts I've learned to maybe add Reaper as a tool inside your video repertoire. Let's get into that. So the first thing that you're going to need to know is how do you actually view the video that you're editing as you're editing it? Up top, just click View and Video, or Hotkey Control Shift P. And using two monitors, I find makes this a lot easier. I would just throw the video preview on one monitor and the editor on the other. The next little trick is super quick, but I need to show you because it's a little wonky and I don't really like that it's this way. It's basically how to rotate a clip. So take a clip, hit F2, or go into the properties of it, and then buried down in this menu is where you find how to rotate it any way that you want. It's not it's something that you're doing that often, but I find I do it enough that it's kind of annoying to have to do that every time. And another feature I found that Reaper has for editing extremely quickly is called ripple editing. Now let me be clear that most video softwares have ripple editing, but I like the way that Reaper does it specifically. So with ripple editing disabled, that's your normal Reaper workflow. So let's say you have a clip and you chop that into three pieces and you delete the piece in the middle. And what happens is you now have two clips with a space in between, as one would expect. However, with ripple editing, what happens is when you delete that space, it takes everything that is after that clip and ships it over directly beside the first clip. Now with typical audio editing, this is actually pretty bad and can really mess up the structure of a song instantly. But something like video and even podcast editing, I find this is super easy because often what we are doing is we're just trimming little bits and pieces off a clip and the typical workflow is you select, select, delete, and then have to shift everything over and hope you didn't mess anything up. And the way Reaper's ripple editing works is it easily shifts all of those clips afterwards directly beside that first clip automatically. On top of that, it has two ripple modes. One is just for that track. So if I delete that middle clip, it'll shift everything over, but it'll leave all the other tracks in the project unaffected. However, if I switch it to the other mode, It'll shift everything and all the tracks together. Meaning if I have several other tracks that have audio or other clips, I don't have to worry about those getting messed up. Everything moves together as one blob, which means on average, you're gonna save about 30% of your clicks, which obviously is obviously a huge time saver. 
And another advantage, and maybe this is just me, but I find that being able to see the waveform really easily makes editing a lot easier. So I know when I'm talking, when I'm not talking, and when I try to do a take and kind of mess it up about four times, the waveforms look pretty similar. So I'm able to see, oh wow, I messed up all four of those. I can probably just skip to the last take because it's so easy to see the waveforms. And yes, other video editors can be configured this, but Reaper's video editor just comes this way without any configuration really required. And one little trick I found for organization, just to easily glance at your project and know what different things are, is to use a combination of tracks and clip names. So you're probably pretty familiar with how tracks work, but I find, especially for little clips that I find as I'm editing, I'm like, hmm, I'm gonna wanna use this later, like little B-roll things. So I find I would typically name that specific clip, which is super easy. So just click on the clip, hit F2, or right click on it, hit properties. And don't worry, it's not gonna override or change any file names, it's just how it appears in Reaper. The next thing is if you're trying to apply any kind of effects. So the way you do this is the same one that you would add a VST in Reaper, is actually go through the effects menu Menu, and there's a specific effect called video processor and inside this there's a whole bunch of presets that have a lot of a common effects that you want and a few not so common effects but to be honest the ones that I use the most are the opacity pan and zoom and to be frank about 90% of these presets you're probably never gonna use but the cool thing is that each of these presets has a couple of knobs that come with it and all those can be automated just like you would automate anything inside Reaper and if you're feeling really fancy the code for how they actually do it is right there and you can actually just modify it if you want and another little quirk to note about using the effects, a lot of them kind of cascade, meaning that if you have effect on track one, track two, and track three, often all four of those effects will stack onto those tracks, which is pretty annoying because it often means you can be pretty limited on how you can use effects. So to give you a quick use case, I'm gonna take an existing video clip and I'm gonna animate some text coming in and some text coming out. So the first thing I do is I add my clip into here and then I'm going to go to effects and add that effects processor. Then I'm gonna go find inside that effects processor the text preset. And you'll find in here that there's no knob for you to actually type your text in because that wouldn't really work very well. So what you actually have to do is have to go into this top level code here and type in what you want. And I'm actually gonna change the font here as well. Okay, now it's showing up on the screen, but also it has this bar that I don't really want. And like most of the effects inside the effects processor here, I don't find the default values to be the first thing that I would use. So let's get rid of that bar. Okay, now we're gonna automate the position of this. If you ever use automation or reaper automation, this part's super easy. Okay, we moved it in, moved it out, no problem. Now bear in mind that tire took about four times as long as it would take in Adobe Premiere. And so if you're gonna go anywhere more than kind of this level of effects processing, you should probably use some other thing. Or sometimes I'll even just do the edit inside Reaper because it's so damn fast. And then I'll export that over to Premiere or something else to do all the effects editing that I wanna do. And if you're not familiar with the existing hotkeys for Reaper for editing, I strongly recommend you use at least the slice and the delete key because that'll make your edit so much faster. And additionally, I also created this custom action that I use a lot, which really just automates the process of splitting the take, selecting the previous take, and deleting it. So let's do another use case where we have a performance video and we're gonna sync it to audio. I'm gonna show you how fast you can actually edit a song to an existing BPM and how much faster this is than basically every other video editor. So we have a couple of performance clips here. And you'll notice that they all have audio waveforms. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to slide this over so I can see that the kick on both of those are matching. And within about two seconds, I have the first clip aligned to the grid and I can easily cut and paste anywhere on there, both listening and viewing the waveform so I can easily align that to the grid. Okay, now we're gonna do a quick edit where basically on every main beat, I'm actually gonna switch to the next clip. And in just a few seconds, we have an edit of four clips already perfectly synced to the beat. So we got our video all edited now, how do we actually export this? And fortunately, this works super similar to how you just render an audio file in Reaper. And so click file and click render like you normally would. So you're gonna go down to format and you have a couple of options here. Though I recommend going with the video, FMMPEG encoder option. And once inside there, you can actually pick the file format that you want, as well as the resolution and frame rate and things like that. And you're gonna wanna match that frame rate to whatever your source material was. And right after that on the video dropdown, just leave it as MJPEG. And the next field is a percentage. And this is basically how much compression. So if you leave this at like 100%, it's gonna have basically no compression, but it's probably gonna generate a couple of gigs worth of file size. So if you don't mind the big file size and letting YouTube or whatever your video host actually handle all the compression itself, you can just leave that as 100%. I generally run it about 80. In the next field in the audio, I generally put that at 24 bit. Now that's generally like my stock preset for YouTube or anything like that. But if that's not giving you the quality that you quite want, you can also check out the MPEG-4 Windows Media format, which has some slightly different options, but uses some different codecs. Then finally after that, you just hit render like you would with an audio file and boom, your audio software has now generated a video for you. And just like it's become a useful tool for me in the audio world, it's actually a really useful tool if used in the right way for the video world. And if you have any specific Reaper video questions, I would love to hear about them in the comments. And as always, I'm Baby Wolf. We'll see you next time. Go make some art.